That's mine. How many have I got to do? <laughs> You've come close here at Le Mans before, but you must be pumped up about this year's race. Well, I keep on coming close, but we keep on having gearbox maladies or hitting walls. But um, this year we're going to approach it differently. We're going to go for consistency of pace and easy on the car. Because it's very competitive this year, particularly in the GT1 class, isn't it? Yeah, but the McLarens are looking quite good um, and the sport prototypes have fallen behind. So. And I think that a big race will develop amongst the GT cars, which will lead to some mechanical malaise, and I don't want to be part of that. 
I've said in the past that this is going to be your last season. I'm not sure if you'll stick to that, but it could be your last Le Mans. It'll be my last season of full-time racing, but it might not be my last Le Mans. Ah, right. What special preparation you made for Le Mans compared with your regular four-hour GT races? Have to set up the cars completely differently? Yeah, we look for uh, double stinting tyres, fuel consumption, a car that is comfortable to drive for long periods. Um, but unfortunately, they've got to be quick, and to make these cars go quick, um, they've become very stiff and uh, un driver unfriendly. At GTC, you've got a good reputation for being a strategist. Um, well, we try and develop a strategy. Sometimes it's forced upon us. But, well, we've got three cars in this race, so that multiplies your chances considerably. Um, I think uh, the Gunnar Raffinel pairing will be very quick. Um, we'll go for consistency, and depending on who Thomas and, Niels, uh, Thomas and uh, John Nielsen have as a co-driver, they could also be pretty quick. What's your lineup for Lamar? Obviously, you've got Andrew Gilbert Scott with you, and then you drafted a third driver. Yeah, we've got Sakia, who won a, here in '95. Um, we've attracted Ueno Clinic sponsorship um, alongside Gulf, and uh, that will give us. Um, some more experience in the car. He's a very regular driver. Everyone says you know he doesn't make mistakes, so uh, hopefully he'll be an asset. This is obviously a very big budget operation to come here at Le Mans. Does it cost more to run this one race than the rest of the season? Oh yeah, no. It's a good proportion of our budget for the year, uh, but it doesn't cost more than the rest of the season. But um, there are some big budget teams here with Schnitzer and uh, the works Porsches. Um, so it's very difficult. People tend to forget that this Le Mans circuit is a fantastic challenge in itself. It's so long and uh, very technical. Yeah, and it's very quick in these cars now with their extra downforce. Speeds down the straight of 330 clicks, uh, which is over 200 miles an hour again. So the speeds are creeping up. And yeah, it is, it is a challenging circuit. And the Porsche curves are now a bit quicker because they've been resurfaced. The only thing that they've spoilt is the first uh, Dunlop chicane where they've made it into a second gear corner a la Formula One and it's a complete aberration of a corner. Obviously looking forward to Le Mans in June but before that this next weekend you've got a little race at Silverstone which is very important for you to win also. Yeah but I never do well at Silverstone we always have some gremlins there because all Gulf bring all their 500 guests so we haven't done we've had a third there I think and I think it'll be tough because the Mercedes are in the uh, FIA series and they're looking particularly strong. Also, about 10 Porsches. Are there 10 Porsches? Well, it's all right. They're a bit slower than us with their uh, FI restrictors at the moment. So I think we can do a good job. These races are all won in the last two hours, not the first two hours. Anything special about Silverstone? Obviously, they changed the circuit again since last year. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> it's meant to flow a bit better. But that'll be a good thing. It's a nice circuit for a GT car and uh, hopefully it's not raining because the McLarens aren't my favourite car in the wet. Um, we'll see what we can do. Try and get rid of those Silverstone Gremlins. Yeah, it would be nice for once. <laughs>
Oh yeah, it's. Uh, I love that. Uh, I I did only two years uh, this circuit. I, I raced two years here. It's uh, really wonderful. But uh, to find it a wonderful, you need a wonderful car because as soon you begin to have uh, an unbalanced car, it, it begins to to be difficult in uh, most of the corners and uh, is uh, is a different uh, kind of attitude. Now the atmosphere is very special for all of us, but particularly for a Frenchman, it must mean the biggest thing in motor racing. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, almost different, you know, because qualify and pre-qualify is something special. But uh, right at the end, you have to consider that 24 hours are the objective, and uh, the performance is one thing, but uh, the the stability in the performance is another thing. Last year, of course, you raced a Ferrari F40 here. Is there any comparison between the new McLaren and the Ferrari you raced? Yeah, it's completely different. Uh, I should say that uh, for the moment, uh, the the balance of the Ferrari was. Uh, uh, on my kind of drive, uh, better, but uh, I'm sure we will find a way with the McLaren to do it uh, in the same way and to, to, to permit me uh, to, to make uh, the races uh, like I have done last year. Next weekend, Silverstone, looking forward to that? Ah oh, yeah, that is uh, an objective for all the year and uh, <laughs> we began well in Okenheim, we are on Silverstone in England at the GTC, our England also, our English also uh, uh, we should be uh, we should be in the top front uh, row. Uh, I hope uh, we will be uh, able to be uh, in the same kind of results like on the podium to score points uh, for the end of the year. A tremendously competitive season. Mercedes Benz in there, of course, and, and Porsche, and then several different McLarens. Really hard work. Yeah, it's 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 really nice. You know, it's uh, like a competition. I, I love that because uh, you are never sure to be in top three or top five even. And uh, if you, you lose a little uh, your way on the Friday, it's difficult on the Saturday and almost impossible on the Sunday. It's, uh, it begins to be uh, as a 3000 races and uh, in the manner of drive the car is also uh, means uh, to be uh, as 3000. Well, Andrew here at Le Mans, it's been quite a learning curve, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot to sort out. The circuit's very different from the, uh, the one time I've been here before. And I think, well, I hope we've made some progress today. We've certainly got a hell of a lot of data to try and put it all together. So um, we just have to see. The race is going to be very interesting. How much has sports car racing changed since you were here with Jaguar, what, six, seven years ago? Yeah, well, to be honest, the cars are very tricky to drive. I don't know whether we just haven't got ours terribly well set up, but the Jaguar had a tremendous amount of, uh, well, it felt like it had a tremendous amount of downforce in comparison. I think the problem with the GT cars for a circuit like this is that they are, you know, to all intents and purposes, uh, road cars modified road cars and uh, I think when you start you know around the 200 mile an hour corner a well corners and stuff I think it is obviously on their the outer edge of their um, working area so they are a bit tricky to drive but when they're good they, they work very well they're super things to drive as in the challenge but uh, I remember the Jaguar was a little bit more consistent shall we say to drive looking forward to the uh, next seven days Silverstone that could be an important race for you yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to race back at Silverstone. I haven't raced there for a lot of, for a long time, and they keep modifying it, so there's hardly a corner I think I know. But um, it's just great to be racing back in England and with the with the golf team. It's a tremendous opportunity, and we were, I think, unlucky at Hockenheim not to maybe pick up a, a good second. So hopefully uh, Silverstone will provide us with our first good result. And working with Ray Bell, not really a gentleman driver, is he? He's uh, a lot better than an amateur. No, I know, it makes me chuckle. Ray does a lot of this sort of gentleman driver, but he is, he is a very quick driver. He's uh, got a lot of experience. We work very well. It's good, the setup of the car. We both agree on exactly what we want, which is tremendous again. And uh, even though I have to put the seat right forward when I'm in it to, to Ray, we, we have appear to be getting on very well, I mean, in, in the car, and certainly get on very well out of the cars. It's, it's great. We look forward to a great display at Silverstone. Good, well, I hope to provide it. Going out of the pit is always a bit, uh, a bit dangerous, not on the test day, but obviously on the race day you've got to be careful not to collect somebody else whizzing down the pit. Then, once we get the green light at the end of the pit road, which we got there, then it's obviously just a matter of making sure that the circuit is clear, check the mirrors, then coming up to, uh, to the Dunlop chicane. This corner actually keeps tightening, and as you'll see, the braking area would, would normally be into this part, and the car gets a little bit light when you turn in, it tucks in. And then the change of direction, you get a bit of understeer and it pushes a bit there. Then you've got a lot of bumps just here on cold tires. You have to be a little bit careful so you can see the car moves. Then you're coming down to the S's, which is very quick, fourth gear and very bumpy. 
So you tuck it in tight to the first one where it's very bumpy, and this one's extremely bumpy. You'll see the car moves all over the place. You have to correct the steering a bit. And this next corner on to uh, Morsan Strait is extremely important to try and keep as much speed going out onto the strait as possible. Anything you lose going into that corner or through that corner will stay with you all the way down the first chicane. Basically here it's just flat out, just trying to really almost relax because there's so much work to do around the rest of the circuit. It used to be a very, very long straight so you did have actually time to relax even if you're doing 250 but now you have to be um, getting ready for the brakes. Down about the 200 yard board, maybe 150 if your car's behaving well. Third gear, turning it in, it's a little bit tight, get a bit of oversteer, tucking it in again tight, same thing, trying to get good power and accelerating out so that you keep as much, take as much momentum with you out onto the next straight. Again, because the straights are so long, anything you lose costs you a lot of time. Car wandering along in the middle of the circuit. It's always better when people keep to the left or to the right. It can be a bit frightening at 200 mile an hour, not, not sure whether the car's going to move or not. Same thing, very similar, but turning into the left-hand corner, 150 yard braking, tucking in, holding it tight. Again, it's relatively smooth, but you do tend to get understeer just there, but you have plenty of track to use coming out of this corner. So you, once you get on the power, you just keep it, keep it on all the way down. Again, this, this lump used to be absolutely flat, about 250. Now it's easy, uh, it's easy over the top. The car used to go very light, but now it's no problem. Down to the 100 yard, braking at a slight curve, which is, again, not so easy because the car gets very light, and particularly down to second gear, turning in, accelerating out. Second gear, the car has hardly any down, so it really does feel very strange very quick and because the track's narrow it has a tremendous sensation of speed too. Because the circuit raises up in the next corner you'll see it actually raises as you go into the corner you can't actually see the other side so potentially quite dangerous if there's any incident on the other side. And you're coming down into Indianapolis which is an awesome corner because it does just take a lot of speed when you've got it right to the gear down to third and you can use second but third gear will save the car stop any gears breaking or having any problem. Then down to second gear, again, this feels incredibly slow. The car's got no downforce. Usually the traction moves a little bit, or loses it a little bit coming out of that. And then, again, accelerating all the way up to sixth gear. This, this bit is really very easy. There's plenty of room. The car feels very stable, but uh, and it's pretty smooth. But coming into the Porsche curves, braking, this is where it's very, very hard. The circuit's got quite a lot of grip, but it's got some adverse camber start to get in it feels good and then when you turn left it starts to understeer and you feel oh, it just runs up wide and then tucking it in again tight and then here it feels like you should try and take a late apex but you have to just keep working the car in and then otherwise when you, you run wide you cannot get tight this left hander and then it's flat for here just changing up this gear and coming back towards the infield where there's basically two chicanes first one turning, tuck it in tight, run over the curb, the car will take it. And again, it's very important to tuck it in very tight and get on the power as early as possible. A little bit of overskew to come out. And check the pit, and, uh, maybe check any information before you start 